The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey Native Root. This is the time of the week, every single week, when Lady A to use the power of engineering to help you, yes, you, <laughs> with your Vision Pro Meet Edition. <laughs> <laughs> um, to find the things on the digikey.com site, Lady A, what are you looking Did for? Did I go the Vision Pro to just have like the DigiKey site? Like, all the way? no, um, I don't know. I can... All right. So one of the projects I'm working on right now is I want to um, make a board using a LTE module, the SIM 7080, which is an uh, L NBIOT slash LTE CAT M cellular module to replace the old 2G and 3G phone boards because these are way past their expiration date. Uh, and part during the part shortage, I can get them. And then, of course, now they're totally discontinued. So um, moving to a new module, um, you know, I'm familiar with this family of modules. And so not a lot of stuff isn't too new. Um, one of the things I have to do is there is a um, reference schematic. Maybe I'll, I'll go down and I'll find it. There's reference schematics for, you know, every um, implementation of, uh, it, you know, the hardware. So it's like, oh, here's how you hook up the, um, you know, external PCM um set up here's so how you can do i squared c uh you can do spi for connecting to like sd card or something but one thing that is um interesting about these modules is they they tend to have like you know a fairly advanced um you know whatever not narrow band but like a net band process or whatever it is that communicates with the cellular network that chip usually has an io voltage of like two point two or 2.8 volts it's not 3.3 .3. and so if you want to have it for example light up uh an led especially for one that's blue uh the 2.8 volts won't be able to do it now if you happen to only want red leds like maybe it would kind of work but the the chips the chip is not intended to have high output high pin strength outputs and so in order to turn on this uh led for like network status they're like, hey, you know, here's really how you should do it. You should have this transistor, which is biased. Um, and, you know, this when this turns on, this transistor sinks current. It turns on the LED powered from VBAT, which is a 3.8 volt uh, or 3.4 volt, you know, battery input. Um, why don't they use N-channel FETs? You know, I'm assuming it's because maybe the IO voltage could be even lower sometimes. Maybe it's like 1.8 volts. And they're like, we want to make sure that you can turn on a transistor. Transistors turn on at 0.7 volts. And some FETs, maybe they don't turn on to like 1.5. I don't know really why. This is the reference circuit. We follow the reference circuit because it's probably for a good reason. Um, so the only thing that's annoying is it's like, okay, well, I want to turn on an LED. And like, before you know it, now I need one, two, three extra components in addition to the resistor and uh, the LED itself. And I want to keep this board small. And one thing I learned is there is such a thing as a pre-biased uh, BJT transistor, which means that you get one three-pin component that has all of these parts built in together. Uh, so very handy, especially if you're, well, you're doing cellular modules where you want this reference circuit. But really, anytime you're like, oh, man, I have like an, a, a large number of transistors. I need like, by the way, six of these pre-biased transistors because there's one for each LED. And then there's one for like another input or an output or the power key. Like there's a bunch of places that they use these transistors uh, that are pre-biased in the reference circuit. So, um, you know, I don't mind picking up maybe an array later, but uh, definitely singleton ones of these to save me from having to also have all the resistors, just like less components to pick. Um, and also I don't have to worry about the, the components being wrong because it's like, it's built into uh, the transistor itself. So let's look for uh, transistors. And if we just click on, uh, yeah, okay, here you go. So the single uh, bipolar transistors are standard MMBT222, PN2907, whatever. But uh, they have a whole category just for pre-biased bipolar transistors. Essentially, I don't know where else these are used. I mean, I definitely like know that they're used a lot, but I've only really seen them referenced in um, this, the, circuit, the data sheets, the hardware design data sheets for cellular modules. So uh, let's check it out. First off, we're only going to go for active. Uh, we also don't need a diode. I'm assuming a diode is maybe a flyback diode. So if you're using it to like power a um, a uh, motor or something, um, but we just want it pre-biased NPN. Let's verify that. Hold on. Okay. 
I clicked away. Hold on. It was net light. There you go. Yeah. So uh, NPN transistor. And then uh, let's make sure that this is surface mount. I don't want a through hole version. In stock. And I'm going to exclude marketplace for now just to make it super easy. All right. So the next thing is you get to pick uh the collector emitter breakdown so um all of these transistors are going to run at no higher than like four or five volts so uh i don't care about this because all of them are higher than my minimum uh sorry my maximum uh next up i will pick the uh resistor base and the resistor gain so um this is the base so the base resistor is 4.7k so let's go here base resistor 4.7k and then base emitter is 47K. So it gives us a gain of 10. Uh, right? Maybe not. No, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, 47. And then apply. Okay, cool. Great. So now I've got 51 options. Um, so it looks like there's actually quite a few families. So the only thing I think I would watch for is, uh, you know, hopefully they all have the same pinouts that they're like cross compatible. Make sure that that's true before you like start secondary sourcing, because I'm not getting, you know, I'm not convinced that these are all going to be the same pinout. Nothing else here is that important. I mean, um, you know, I needed to be able to handle like 10 milliamps, but all of them handle 10 milliamps. These are the gain, but the gain, you know, the gain isn't relevant for, uh, and these are the saturation also not relevant. Um, okay. So let's look at pricing. So let's say I'm going to get a thousand a piece. Looks like, uh, the MMUN22233 is kind of the cheapest, but there's actually quite a few, which is nice. One thing I'll note is that there's a few in this family, uh, LT1G and t1g you don't know the difference between those probably just packaging though and then yeah so this is just making sure this is collect this is set up the right way looks good and looks like it hasn't they actually have it in a, as little as a sot 1123 so you can get them quite tiny i might actually you know what's funny is that normally i would say go for a sot 23 but um if they have it in an sc70 let's see what packages they've got they've got sc70 SC75, that's teeny. So let's maybe look at one of these. I think the rest of these are a little bit too small. SOT70 is a little bit smaller than the SOT23. SC75 looks okay, but these are, I think these are a little too tiny for me to deal with. So let's look at these. Okay, cool. So yeah, we've got the SMUN5233. Also got this DTC. Same family just smaller package size all you know easily yeah handle 100 milliamps easily so yeah these are some good options so i think you know if i'm going with the sot 23 oh it looks like the naming determines the the package size so yeah the s s mun is the sot 323 sc70 um the dtc is the name for the sc75 but they're all the same group so yeah either one of these uh would be good check this one out um, this should save me a lot of space because I'm going to need like six or seven of these. Um, so I'm going to pick these and make sure that I get them laid out in the board. Maybe by next week, I'll show you the board layout for my new cellular module. And that's the great search.